Crossing the room, I inhaled half a cup of coffee, my brain finally shuddering awake. As the women chattered excitedly about the festival, an idea formed. Ladies, what kind of books did you say you like to read? Well, we of course read all subject matters. I like the smut books. We all like the smut books. Smut, romance, closed-door bad boy, sweet romance. We'll take them all. But periodically we veer off course into a nice grisly thriller when the mood strikes. We don't judge. Even better. Ladies after my own heart. I'm a literature professor, and I have a particular love for fairy tales. Are you married? Nope. How old are you? Too young for you, hussy. What? We read age gap romances. As such, I'm hoping you'll help be my fairy godmothers of sorts. Oh, I like the sound of this. Go on. I met the woman of my dreams last night. However, it's been brought to my attention that I will need to court her, if you will. And I'd like to do so, perhaps with your assistance? (laughs) Who is she? Is she a princess? Court, it sounds so formal. Where did you meet her? Should we kidnap her? At that, everyone turned to look at Esther, who shrugged innocently. Well, it's one way to guarantee your attention. I'd prefer to refrain from any international crimes, if at all possible. I meant to go to the bookstore today to offer my assistance with helping at the festival. Maisie will be there, and I'd like to convince her to have dinner with me. Have you tried asking? Of course he's asked her. He's not dumb. You asked the girl already, didn't you? I did. She was interested, but I didn't get a solid yes from her. Got it. All right, ladies. We have a quest. Volunteer at the book festival and Operation True Love. What if it's not true love? Don't they deserve the chance to figure that out together? That's fair. We'll have to discuss strategies. The women piled out the front door, and I hastily grabbed my keys, phone, and jacket. I'd actually just changed my roommate's tire a few weeks prior, so I was confident I could get them on the road quickly. But... With the way the wind seemed to want to slice me open with its icy blades of fury, I was also hoping they'd give me a ride into town after. At some point, I would need to sort out groceries, but for now, I just wanted to see Maisie again. By the time I had the tire changed, with much fanfare and a few My Heroes thrown about, we were on our way into Lauren Bray. I'd been positioned in the middle of the back seat, and we'd been delayed five minutes while the book bitches fought over who got to sandwich me. Once that was sorted, we arrived at Bonnie Books in no time, and I got my first look at Lauren Bray in the daylight. The cheerful village hugged the frigid waters of Loch Mirren, colorful buildings tumbling on top of each other, each door painted a different color. It was as though the town had been built as an afterthought, each building attaching to the next and it reminded me of the hodgepodge nature of the pub and how all the pieces jumbled together to form a perfect picture. Bonnie Books was a hive of activity, with people streaming in and out of a stone building with pretty arched windows that looked out over the lock. It was a space for dreamers. How did anyone visit here and remain unaffected? I stepped out of the car and caught a glimpse of Maisie through the tall front window. She was laughing her hands full of books, her hair wild around her head. And I stopped, a ripple of understanding moving through me. I wanted to be the one she smiled at like that. That's the girl? That's the one. I say we badger her until she agrees to go out with you. Oh, we can guilt her into it. Yes. Shame her for not taking a chance on this fine man. I have rope in the boot. No kidnapping, no force, no badgering. If you can't find a way to be subtle about your matchmaking, then I'm relieving you of your quest. What about us suggests we have a knack for subtlety? We'll be on our best behavior. Promise. We'd no want to scare off the last now, would we?